one man has dominated Formula One for the last four years. Sebastian Vettel wins the season. World champion. But that could be about to change. Yeah. As a new set of regulations turns Formula One on its head. <laughs> the first of the big rule changes is the engine. I'm with Pat Simmons, technical director of Williams. Pat, what is going on with these engines for next year? Well, firstly, I think we have to call them powertrains because they, they are much more than engines. We're going from a 2.4-litre V8 normally aspirated engine to a 1.6-litre V6 turbocharged engine. This year we've had PERS. Next year we're calling it ERS. It's energy recovery because it's more than just the kinetic, which is what the K is in PERS. We have 10 times the energy storage and twice the power. So 160 horsepower of electric power that we can add to our engine and we can do it for around 33 seconds. As if that wasn't bad enough, the rule makers have chucked in a whole bunch of aerodynamic changes as well. Sam Michael, sporting director of McLaren, what's changing? Well, the first thing you'll know, Tom, is that the front of the car, uh, the front wing is going to be 75 mil narrower per side. That'll change the airflow around the front of the car, but as you go down the car, it has a massive effect on the diffuser and, and everything behind it. So that, combined with the lower chassis at the front, is the first change of the air seats. So let's move on to the nose. Obviously now you have a certain chassis height, uh, which is dictated by regulation, 625 mil. That chassis height's coming down by 75 mil. That's going to push the front nose tip down as well. The whole idea was to improve launching and, and safety at the front of the chassis. A lot has been said about the changes to the exhausts. I suppose it's a huge relief for the teams that Coanda is no longer a problem. Well, it's, it's going to be gone completely because the exhaust exit's right there at the moment and that blows air down into the tyre spat area. Next year, you're going to have a single tailpipe that's going to run straight through here, down the back of the impact structure and out the back, so you're not going to have any ability to do any exhaust blowing. In addition to that, at the rear of the car, we've got a, the, the rear wing box, which is this, this distance here, this height, is reduced by 20 millimetres, so it makes the rear wing box a little bit smaller. But most importantly, the, the rear lower wing, that's gone completely on next year's car. The key to finding the advantage in Formula 1 is finding that loophole. Now, Sam, are there any loopholes in these new regulations? Inevitably. I mean, obviously, the, at all the working groups and the FIA meetings that we have, we try and close everything down to achieve the objectives. You've got to remember that there's 500 people in, in every Formula 1 team, and their job is to find loopholes, so inevitably there will be some. The question now is which of these drivers will adapt best to the new rules? Going into next year, you can't really judge or say, you know, you can't say based on this year's performance they're going, they're going to be good next year, or the other way around, you know, it's impossible to say. Next year, if you apply the throttle a little bit too quickly, because of the torque, you, you are going to lose the rear end, so it's, it's a very different feeling give the throttle pedal a lot more respect than, uh, than any other year of racing in F1. For sure Red Bull is going to be quick because they just have a great team, but I think uh, we can give them a good run for their money. Probably not what people want to hear at home, but um, yeah, I think the help Sebastian, that's right up his alley. Perfect for him.